Okay, today's topic is about, uh, how am I going to put this? How am I going to put this? It's about, um, not exactly, no. I've got people talking to me in the background. Someone said we're going to talk about deservingness. And I said, no, we're not going to talk about deservingness. Um, the topic is being broached by a meme I saw today. And the meme was basically, um, you're not, uh, not worthy, not really. It's your skills are not as good as someone who's a CEO of a corporation. And that's why they deserve the um, huge salaries and benefits that they get versus someone, let's call them um, a frontline worker. Let's say someone who does anything from shoveling snow for a living to working in retail or a, a restaurant worker. That, that those people uh, clearly are paid far less than a CEO of a big corporation. And, uh, well, they deserve it because they made the wrong life choices. And the CEO clearly worked every weekend and uh, never went to a cocktail party, worked their ass off, and um, because they made those choices, they really do deserve to be uh, paid. Well, this was the meme, and my friends said, we need to do a talk on this one. I'm not a CEO. I'm more closer to a frontline worker kind of person. I don't have a good answer. Well, I don't have a good answer. Mostly because uh, in certain cases it's true. In certain cases it's true that uh, the CEO worked harder than um, some of the other people. The example was... Uh, the CEO person, instead of going out to cocktail parties, in other words, going to the bar and drinking, uh, they didn't. They were working overtime at their job.
I'm not going to be able to address all the points, most likely because um, I probably done it already. But let's go through the points one by one. Point one is uh, someone who shovels snow for a living um, might have a high school education, and because they don't have degrees, they don't deserve any more than a snow shoveler's wage. The CEO in this meme actually doesn't have any degrees. They're a, a college dropout. Uh, just so you know what's happening when I'm being silent, I'm being with this um, issues, these issues, I'm being with them. So I'm concentrating on my breathing and I can sort of feel these, maybe they're points of view and various other ideas that want to jump in. And I'm feeling them with my body. I'm getting a few words mm, in my mind, but primarily I'm feeling these issues in my body and breathing through them. They don't feel good, just so you know. It's not a pleasant feeling. It's a lot of effort to put the breathing in on these ones. So what is this practice that I'm doing? We call it being with. And is it, what's the purpose of it? What would you call it? The description of this is it's you and strong, it could be thought forms. Let's call them thought forms. You and strong thought forms hitting you at the same time. And all of the thought forms that are coming in don't really, they're not like a jigsaw puzzle. They're not pieces of a jigsaw puzzle that fit together. These ones don't fit together at all. They don't overlap. They're basically going like, they're coming up and crunching against each other. That's what these two thought forms are doing. And what are the two thought forms? Um, both thought forms are saying, um, I'm right and the other one is wrong. So they're very aggressive thought forms. Uh, one thought form is, um, uh, 
One thought form is frontline workers work really hard. They have very hard jobs. And, and snow blowing or snow shoveling is very heavy physical work. It's not like you're lazy if you're snow shoveling. And if you're in retail, um, sometimes you have a pleasant customer and sometimes you have a horrible nightmare of a customer. So bad that after, or maybe, you know, you just can't handle this customer and you need to go and take the rest of the day off because they have such horrible, such a horrible nature and you dealt with them. And those people are saying, um, to say that a CEO of a corporation who does make way, way more money than me um, deserves it, they're somehow uh, working their ass off more than I am, is a pile of shit. That's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. It may be the way it is in this world, but it's not justice. It's not just, and it's not fair. And for the CEO to say, um, you know, I'm more deserving of what I've got is bullshit. And that's running up against the view of the people who are in bed with the CEO. And they say, uh, sorry, the CEO made all the right moves. And you didn't. So tough titty for you. Um, we don't really want to acknowledge any work that you do. You're lucky if you get your minimum wage or you get your task rabbit kind of job. You get paid piecemeal. You're lucky that you get that because you screwed up. If you didn't screw up, you'd be the CEO. And uh, the CEO says, um, well, uh, if I need uh, my driveway plowed, um, I just call up Mr. Plow and Homer Simpson shows up. He plows my driveway and, um, you know, he's got my credit card and it's super easy. Why should I feel bad that there's poor people out there? Why should I feel bad about that? You know, if they were smart, they would uh, change careers. And then the frontline worker says, um, Mr. CEO, uh, I'm sorry, but you don't realize that uh, I have a life and I'm uh, maybe struggling to keep it going. But, you know, for me to change careers from being a frontline worker to uh, getting paid vast amounts of money, uh, I don't really see a path. And the CEO said, well, you could read some self-help books, maybe some biographies of people like Henry Ford, and then you should apply yourself in coming up with an idea that you can go on to Shark Tank with and, um, you know, parlay that into uh, you becoming a CEO of your own company. The snowplow guy says, um, well, that's all great and wonderful for you, but I'm really a physical person and I don't get ideas, you know, and I do, I know I don't read books, Um so you're saying I should read some of these self-help books. And, um, well, the simple fact is I've never been good at reading. I guess that's my fault. I should have applied. I should have had a tutor. No, but the problem is even if I, um, oh, well, you see the frontline worker, he's like, he sees there's flaws to his story. He sees that there are things that he could do. He could brush up on his reading ability and read a self-help book. Somebody else comes along and says, <laughs> sorry, you just got taken. Because I read all these self-help books and uh, you know what? I still ever got a, a, a great idea to start my own company that I could take to the bank with. So, you know, 
That's all fine and good that you read these self-help books, Mr. CEO. I read them too, and I never got the, the great inspiration. Um, where did you get your inspiration from or something? And then the CEO says, uh, well, I was just, you know, doing what I normally do, and, you know, everything just sort of fell into place. So, you know, that's the old saying they used to say, uh, you get your shit together and providence will move for you. In other words, God helps those who help themselves. And the other two people, the guy that just came in, the snowplow guy, say, um, well, you know, it's not like I haven't been like doing things day to day since I was born. I have been. Okay, let's cut to the crux of the matter. What's really going on here? I've got these points of view that, you know, if you work hard enough, you're going to get paid off. And the other one is, I'm working damn hard. And, you know, I did it, you know, the path that I had in my life. And, I'm, you know, I'm not making 500000 a year. So, if you had someone else that was going to come along and uh, summarize it all, they would say, I can't come to a solution on here. I mean, if I'm a judge, what am I going to say? Well, I'm going to say, eh, I understand. At the end of the day, the CEO is going to make way more than 500000 a year. And the snowplow guy, you know, he's going to get paid 20 bucks to, for shoveling out a CEO's driveway. So where's the justice and uh, the balance in here? Uh, you have to move away from the whole scenario. We have to say, uh, we can't solve this. We can't say, you know, I mean, I'm, what am I supposed to say? You still need someone to do your snow plowing. What's the real problem? The real problem is that the guy who's shoveling snow cannot afford to live in the same city as the guy who needs his snow shoveled. The frontline workers cannot afford to live and what they're paid. And the CEO can afford to buy up a whole pile of housing uh, to rent it out to people like the frontline workers. Another little business for the CEO guy. So the fairness is there ain't no fairness in this world. Nothing is fair. If it was a fair world, then um, people would have a place to live while they do the things that they do. Is our job to institute justice so that frontline workers can afford a place of their own? Are we supposed to increase the taxes on the CEOs that are making millions? Are we supposed to raise the minimum wage? The answer to all these things is you cannot get there from here. You cannot solve this problem at the level of consciousness that I presented it to you at. What does that mean? Well, it's an old saying. It says, 
uh, when you come with a problem, this is injustice, uh, at the level you've brought the problem in at, you cannot solve it. You need more consciousness. So how do you pour more consciousness onto this? You have to let go of the problem altogether. How do you do that? You just throw up your arms and say, I can't solve this at my level of consciousness. I can't do it. So Wayne Dyer, the spiritual teacher, said, you have to get into the gap. What is the gap? It's silence. It's the gap between words. In other words, you have to get into inner silence. And then what happens? Uh, no one really knows. But you're basically going silent, saying, my little brain can't figure this out. You know, that's basically my solution is to raise minimum wage and increase taxes on the rich. Well, so far, how's that worked for you? Nothing has happened. In my little world, nothing happened. The wages didn't go up and the taxes didn't go up. Nothing happened. I just talked about it for a little while. I did some deep breathing exercises and I came to the conclusion that my little brain cannot solve this. To me, it does seem like an injustice, just so you know. To me, it seems like an injustice because I feel like uh, people, frontline workers, deserve to have a place of their own to go home to after work. And they shouldn't be um, in poverty. So that's the problem, and uh, I don't have a solution for it. Uh, so my next thing, Wayne Dyer says, i got to get into the gap. I have to get into inner silence. And which means I basically, um, I can either go into a meditation and be quiet for an hour, or I could just let it go and um, do something else. But I basically have to let go of the issue. And how does this work? Well, it's not the first time I've thought about this problem, injustice among different levels of workers. And uh, so far, whatever the higher wisdom is by me going into the gap uh, hasn't done anything about it. As far as I can see, nothing has changed. So what does that mean? It means uh, I'm powerless to do anything about it. And everyone says, well, you should empower yourself. I'm sorry, this one. This is a difficult one. I don't see a solution to it. In the meantime, how is the retail worker or the snow shoveler uh, surviving? Uh, somehow they are surviving. Somehow. Somehow. Because I still see them shoveling snow, and if I go into a store, I still see a retail worker. So, from the last time when I was thinking about this to now, somehow they survived. A year ago, I came across a posting of a young man, maybe 30, early 30s, um, who committed suicide because he couldn't make it. And before he died, he talked about what it was like, the feeling of oppression from living in a society where um, he had uh, no home, a homeless person. Uh, this one didn't make it. And a year has gone by, and what's changed in our society for homeless people? Nothing. Nothing. J.P. Morgan Chase, the giant bank, 
reported enormous profits last year. Enormous profits and a big stock price jump. How are we supposed to feel about this? Well, the one that came to our mind is um, there was one wise man who said, you can judge a society based on how it treats its most belittled people. In other words, if you've got a lot of homeless in your country, it doesn't matter how many rich bankers there are, it's the way that that poor person is treated by your society that your society will be judged Who's going to judge it? Who's going to judge it? I guess that wise man. Somebody else who's a stock picker is going to say, well, you know, I'm going to invest in J.P. Morgan Chase. You make my money. And as far as these homeless people, well, if they were smart, they would get a little nest egg and save it away and stick it into J.P. Morgan Chase. Make some money. <coughs> the whole issue is the person on the street is going through an awful lot of turmoil maybe maybe they're happy maybe they've got a dog and they're sitting on a blanket outside of a bar downtown. But maybe they're like the one that committed suicide. The anxiety of it all became, I couldn't live with it. Uh, that's your topic, and as far as what to do with more of these, someone says ethical dilemmas. Well, I don't know. Is it an ethical dilemma? I mean, what can the the CEO really do? You could say, uh, uh, give more money to the frontline workers out of my paycheck or something. He could donate to community organizations, United Way. The whole answer is, it's all individual. And on a planet of individuals, some are going to do well and some aren't. And the takeaway from it all is, you don't have a say. You have to just be here on the planet knowing that injustices go on every day. And as much as you post memes on Facebook or Instagram, uh, your memes don't make a change in the world. So you have to become stoic. The stoic is someone who lives with the situation as it is and knows they really don't have any ability to change things. So they just put on their stone face and show up until they drop dead. I'm not a Stoic. Sometimes I'm appearing to be a Stoic. No, I am a, someone says an optimist. I am a person who comes, shows up, and I'm going to keep showing up as long as I keep showing up. The difference between me and a Stoic is I am here 
And I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I'm in inner silence quite a lot. In other words, I'm in the gap. And whatever's going on when I'm in the gap, I'm really not privy to. I don't know what's going on in other people's little heads. I don't know what's going on in the collective. I don't know. I don't have a clue. Sometimes I listen to other people who talk to various other entities, psychic kind of people, to get an idea of what they're saying. Does it mean anything to me? Ah, I take it all with a grain of salt. It's interesting, but it's not explaining what's going on behind the scenes. So I just show up again, tune in tomorrow. Maybe I'll be here. I'm Harry Weaver for The Reality Game.